Well, thank you for being with us, by G. I'll tell you what, you're working the, uh, you're working the texts over time. Sachin has said, Alan, thank you for introducing us to Michelle Rowland. She sounds like a breath of fresh air amongst politicians and she talks common sense. Thank you. And Marie from the Gold Coast has texted to say, Alan, I'm in total shock that Hugh Bowman has been suspended for six weeks. What about Andrew Adkins and the trainer? Their sentence is so much greater and they're innocent. Indeed. Look, there's plenty happening in sport, but I wanted to start tonight with the very sad news in the world of rugby, that yesterday we lost one of the greats of the game, the remarkable all-black captain Andy Hayden. He was only 69. He played 117 games for New Zealand between 1972 and 1985, 41 tests. He captained the All Blacks on eight occasions. The New Zealand rugby president is a former teammate, the very fine centre Bill Osborne. He summed it up when he said, not only was Andy an immense physical presence, there was also immense respect from his teammates. Bill Osborne said, most people will remember the way he dominated the line out as a tower of strength but we also remember the way he looked after the young players coming into the All Blacks and how he advocated for players' rights both during and after his playing career. And how true is that? He was fearless, Andy. He wasn't afraid to say, what the hell are we doing playing in front of packed stadia, making a fortune for someone and none of us gets a brass razoo? Andy was a real pioneer. Everyone talks about 1978, the All Blacks versus Wales at Cardiff Arms Park. Wales were leading 12-10 inside of their first victory against New Zealand since 1953. Andy wasn't going to go down wondering. He dived out of the line-out pretending he'd been pushed. A penalty to New Zealand. Interestingly, the winning penalty goal was taken by the fullback Brian McKechnie, who became part of another chapter in sporting history when three years later, the dual international was at the crease when Trevor Chappell bowled an underarm delivery to him in a one-day cricket international. Andy Hayden was roundly condemned and never forgiven by Welsh fans for the dive that he took. But the English referee, Roger Quittenden, you see it here. <laughs> the English referee, Roger Quittenden, who was the best in the world, I might add, said the penalty was for another line-out infringement. Andy Hayden was a giant of a figure in many ways. He was always looking after his teammates. Some of them used to call him the Minister for Lurks and Perks. <laughs> six foot six he was, 120 kilos. He'll be remembered as one of the greats of the game of rugby. Appropriately, the famous Eden Park Stadium will host the funeral of Andy Hayden on Monday. Well, a couple of other sporting stories. Greyhound racing doesn't get the coverage it deserves. The Greyhound owners love their dogs and Tony Mestroff is doing a hell of a job as the boss of Greyhound Racing in New South Wales. Last week, the industry had a $58 million wagering turnover, the highest ever in a seven-day period. And the $1 million chase will happen. The world's richest Greyhound race, October 16 at Wentworth Park. First prize, a $1 million. Now, Clover, Clover Moore, what are you doing, Clover? She wants to end Greyhound Racing at Wentworth Park and she wants to land, quote, return for public use. Clover, it's already being used by the public. It's the home of Greyhound Racing. Or aren't these people part of the public? But no, Sydney City Council voted on Monday night 8 to 2 to demand that Greyhound Racing end at Wentworth Park. We're run by very unworldly people. The final say belongs to the Berejiklian government. How worldly are they? Clover wants to talk to the Better Regulation Minister, Kevin Anderson. Where is the Less Regulation Minister? And Rob Stokes is the Public Spaces Minister. I think the biggest empty space is between the ears of some of these politicians. Well, the AFL is now trying to keep a step ahead of border closures and quarantine. About 500 players, support staff and families will this week board chartered planes for Brisbane from Melbourne and Sydney to join teams already up there. It's costing the AFL $3 million a week, plus flights, hotels and medical costs just to keep the competition going. The Swans and the Giants received 24 hours notice on Wednesday to get out of Sydney. They'll base themselves in Queensland for the next week and then they'll fly to WA for an indefinite period. They may be on the road for the rest of the year. But thank goodness for the NRL and the AFL. Australians love their sport and we're grateful for their efforts. In cricket, the West Indies have just lost a series to England, two tests to one. But this is the sign of the times. Every single day of their 51 days in the UK was spent at one of two cricket grounds where they ate, slept, bathed, trained and breathed. 
was virtually sleeping at the office on work days and weekends. The only people they saw were players, support staff and hotel employees. And for England, what about that Stuart Broad? He was left out of the first test. He took his 500th test wicket on the last day of the third test. And look out for the next Ashes series that Ben Stokes is a freak. But now, you heard it first here. And a few blokes I saw with me saw this the other night. A 27-year-old Rakeem Cornwall. He's the biggest man ever in first-class cricket. 140 kilograms, that's 22 stone. 196 centimetres tall, that's six feet five. There he is. <laughs> he's an off-spin bowler and he's a batsman. He's made a first-class century. And Shane Watson, one of the greats of the T20 format, swears by his talent. He says he's a power hitter <laughs> and a genuine off-spinner. Tuesday night, remember, I spoke to Danny Williams the trainer of the racehorse Hot and Hazy, involved in that horrific fall at Rose Hill last Saturday. The stewards today found, as you heard me say, Huey Bowman guilty of careless riding on his mount, smart image, and suspended him for six weeks. There are no winners here. It's awful stuff for Danny Williams and his family and the horse. Huey Bowman, I suppose, can be believed when he says he is a careful rider but understands the devastating circumstances. He did disagree with the stewards' findings. And still on horse racing, the ATC in Sydney will host a luncheon on Saturday, August 22, to celebrate the career of Winx, Winx Stakes Day. You can go to the ATC website and book tickets. August 22, the ATC say they've made their race day COVID safe. And congratulations to James McDonald, who's won his fourth Sydney Jockeys Premiership, the last two in a row, and Craig Williams, the great hoop, top of the tree in Melbourne, and the 21-year-old Bailey Nudif has won the Premiership in Brisbane, and Todd Pannell in Adelaide. What about the trainers Chris Waller in Sydney? has trained more winners than the second and third leading trainers put together. David Hayes and the family of one in Melbourne. Tony Gollan, a runaway winner in Brisbane. And in a tight race, Tony McAvoy is the top Adelaide trainer just ahead of Philip Stokes. It's a tough gig, that stuff, I have to tell you. Well, look, we're talking celebrating and nostalgia. Now, all you Balmain Tigers fans, we've got two legends of the game tonight. In this segment, we're going to look each week at the present and the past. In all sport, the past, as you've heard with... Shirley Strickland and Margaret Court, and our oldest ever soccer player, the past is rarely properly celebrated. I would have liked to have had three Balmain blokes here tonight. Benny, Steve Roach and Paul Sirenen. Benny, Blocker and Ciro. But Ciro, with all this social distancing, I had to drop you, which I never had to do when I coached you, I have to say. Paul Sirenen was a magnificent player. But it's a mystery to those who love and study the game that when the NRL announced a Hall of Fame and, in fact, relaunched it, Benny Elias isn't there. Top 100, not there. I suppose died in the all rugby league fans couldn't tell you who was in the top 100. But many who study the game will say that Benny Elias was quite simply a freak. And they're both here anyway. I thought we'd have a walk down memory lane. Blocker, a long time ago, May 82, when Blocker made his debut against the Canberra Raiders. Stephen Roach was the prop of the year in 1984, 86 and 89. Two kangaroo tours in 86 and 90. 287 first class games. 185 for Balmain. 24 tries. Blocker. That's you. <laughs> You're too kind, mate. You're too kind. That's How you. are you? Mate, I'm good. <laughs> good. You got me little mate in there too. Yes. How, how well, good is it? well I've got to talk to you, mate. Benny, come in there, Benny. How good was Blocker? Oh, come on. Oh, he's the best, mate. Without a doubt, he was uh, my man on and off the football paddock. AJ, as you know, he was uh, a man that you never, you always knew that if you looked at the left and right-hand side, Blocker was always there and uh, an absolute champion bloke. But, but Blocker, this fella, Benny Elias, has to be the most underrated hooker in the last 40 years. Paul Kent wrote a very interesting piece recently that Benny changed the way the position was played. I mean, once upon a time, the hooker was someone who was too short to go in the second row and he just actually made a couple of passes and got the movement going. Mm. This is a bloke that could do anything. Alan, I've said it a hundred times. He's, he's the best Balmain player ever to play for the, for the Tigers since they started in 1908. Um, I, I was lucky enough to play with Benny in the juniors before we both went to, went to grade. Um, he could do things. I seen him in a first grade game, chip over the top, regather, chip over the fullback, regather, score under the post, and turn around to me and go, "What?" <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I go, Isn't oh, that what you do? A, but he was unbelievable. But <laughs> isn't um, that what you do, uh, Benny? Benny, where did you learn? Because you you followed all that rugby league, and yet suddenly you decided to play it differently. There'd be a shuffle of a pass to the left, another pass, and then you'd push someone through a gap there. You'd chip kick over the top. Where did you decide that that was the way you were going to play? 
Well, at a very young age, Alan, I think when you start... You know, I, I had my idols playing uh, rugby league, actually, from the day I understood... Um, I, well, as far as I could, well, as soon as I could walk, I loved playing or watching rugby league, and it was the players that I was watching in my they were my heroes, Greg Cox and the the Larry Corowers, and the, the exciting players were the were the ones obviously getting all the attention. So I tried to mimic these people in the backyard with my three brothers. Well, we'd always play in the backyard and try everything. So well, I've got to say, I don't know whether our lovely friend of all of us, John Brennan, is watching tonight. And Breno, oh, yeah. and Breno once said. Love him. Well, the God made heaven and earth in seven yeah. days and he made <laughs> Benny Elias on, on the eighth. eighth remember? Yeah. Uh, but Benny, it's a, and Blocker both of you, it's a demanding role. You're not a fullback waiting for the kick return. You're not a winger out there having a bit of a rest. You've got to be at every breakdown and direct traffic. Yeah. Al, can I just say about Benny, just, just quickly, I don't want to embarrass him. He's one of no, his mates. We, we, we hang around together all the time now. But, you know, when I, when I look <clears> at footy players and I look at the whole history, and I, I love the history of the game... Yeah. The one thing about Benny Elias is everyone knew what he was going to do, but they still couldn't stop That's it. it. That's so that, that is genius to me. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I love playing footy. I played all my career with him uh, and I, I, do, I couldn't think of anyone else. But, I'd Benny, what play. about this bloke here as well, a prop and a big man? Yeah. But what I loved, he was prepared to run with the ball and unload out of a tackle at a time when people would be saying, oh, that's a risk, don't do that. And he was pushing people on the soft passes through gaps. Well, that, you're spot on, AJ. You, you know, Blocker always played what he saw in front of him and, and that's the way you coached us when you were at the Tigers, was, you know, create the opportunity, don't be robotic and uh, and try things. You'd rather try things and not come off than, than, than the other option, which was uh, very, very predictable. Yeah. Blocker, Blocker had that knack of... of ball playing and absolutely making inroads into the opposition. There aren't too many of those players today no. that, 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 no. that, play the, that play the gaps. And, Benny, isn't it true, we watched the game today, and I have to say it's a very good game. I mean, rugby drives me mad, and I hate saying that. Yeah. But the only way you can put pressure on the defence is to shift the ball. That's it. If you sort of play one up and one out, they just pick you off all day, don't they? Yeah. Right. You blokes, you're, you're you blokes would do that. Well, Alan, it, it really came from Benny at the start. If you have a look at the way the game's played now, it's fast and flat. Yeah. So we used to have players in motion. Benny used to... But That's he it. invented it. That's so it. Bodies we'd in have motion. Bodies in motion, blokes yeah. running in the gaps, and he'd, he'd obviously pick me out and give me the yeah. ball or dummy half the time and run himself. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> someone, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, we always had to have someone inside and someone outside. Yep. There had to be someone ready to receive the ball. And give the ball to someone in a better yeah. position than yourself. So yeah. that was always the idea that we learnt. And, you know, you know, Indigenous round two, and we're talking about that this week. The great Arthur Beetson was my oh, hero when I was yes. growing up. I love Arthur Beetson. Yeah. God rest his soul, he's not with us anymore. But, mate, what a player. What and a everyone player. Should, should be able to watch those sort of guys yeah. and emulate the way they played. Well, listen, Benny, I just wanted tonight to sort of share with people because I know you... I have no idea who makes these decisions, the top 100, but I'll tell you what, those yeah. who played with you and against you 100%. would have you in the top five, I can tell you. Oh. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice of you, Alan. Thank you. I do appreciate it. And, and obviously, coming from people like yourself and Block, obviously, mean a lot. So you guys know a fair bit about the game. We had some good time. <laughs> Benny was the first person, I've got to tell you, that ever had a mobile phone. We couldn't afford a mobile phone. <laughs> and we'd go to training, wouldn't we? And Benny would have his mates ring him on the mobile phone. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and a Honda Repel <laughs> Pro you too. Remember, you used to yeah, we'd have you see a Honda Pro you. Now he's got a Maserati. Hey, block, <laughs> block, block, see I'm going to forget we're at Leichhardt Oval and we're, we're training. <laughs> we're doing a ball work session. And um, a mobile phone, uh, Alan had yeah. always had his mobile phone and Ken Shine was his assistant coach <laughs> back then. And and and, and Ken Shine runs out in the football field. We're having a, a team meeting at the end of, the, of a training session. And he says, it's the Prime Minister. It's the Prime Minister on the phone. <laughs> and Alan goes, oh, he can wait. Don't worry. I've got more important things to do That's here. right. And we did. Hey, Alan, did. you remember, you remember oh, in 1992, go. just quickly, yeah, yeah. you're the one that put me on television. You said, can you do the sideline for Channel 9? I, I said, what do you do? You said, don't worry, just do it. <laughs> That's what happened. And he did it and he's been That's in the right. media ever since. There they are, the two boys. And Ciro, sorry you couldn't be with us, but that's a look into the past. 